So let's look at a different type of improper integral. Last time, I looked at what happened when we had infinite limits of integration. So now I want to consider what happens when we integrate up against a vertical asymptote. So before the infinities went out this way, now our infinity is going to go up and down. Okay, we're going to call these infinite discontinuities, where vertical asymptotes appear. Example I want to start with, in 741, we were talking about arc length, and we considered an integral that looked like this, going from 0 to 1, radical 1 minus x squared in the bottom, dx. Okay, if you notice, here's the graph of this. If I put 1 into the function, we wind up dividing by 0. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote at 1. So we should probably be very careful when we take this integral, because we're not sure, you know, you could figure this out by just sticking your numbers in, but that's no guarantee that when you take that limit that it's going to be well behaved. So we have to be precise about this. So we go to the same type of definition I do when I have an infinite limit. So it'll be something like this. I want to take these finite areas given by taking slices going up to a fixed B, and then we're just going to see what happens as I let that right hand bar go all the way out to 1. Hopefully it goes out to a number, and that's what I call the area under that curve, or the value of the improper integral. So let's see what happens. So the idea is, I'm just going to take some b, chop it off, and then take that definite integral, and then let that come out. So we're going to compute definite integral from 0 to b of our gadget, and then take the limit as b goes to 1 from the left, since we're going to push it this way. A derivative of 1 over radical 1 minus x squared is inverse sine of x. So I'm going to evaluate that at b and 0, take their difference, and then take the limit as b goes to 1 from the left. Sine inverse of 0 is 0, so I'm just going to wind up with a sine inverse of b. Take the limit as b goes from the left. Let's take a look at um, the geometry here. I draw a picture of my unit circle. First thing to check out is, I know sine of 0 is equal to 0, so if I push the sine to the other side as inverse sine, I get sine inverse of 0 equals 0. Okay, remember, sine gives me the y value on the unit circle, so if I have my y value of 0, that's just going to be the angle 0. All right. So let's see now. I want to get the limit as b goes to 1 from the left of sine inverse of b. Let me rewrite that. I'm going to have sine inverse of b. We'll call that theta because it's going to be an angle. Let's write that as sine of theta equal to b. Now, b is going to tend to 1. So what's that mean? Sine is the y value. So that's going to mean that we're going to be pushing the y value up. What, what does this do with the angles? Well, if the y value is going up, the angles are going to start coming up higher and higher and higher, pushing to the y-axis. When I finally get to 1, we notice that we've already pushed ourselves already up to pi over 2, and then we can't push any further. In fact, we know that if I put pi over 2 in for sine, we get a 1 out. So you could use a continuity argument for that, 6 and 1 half, a dozen the other. I think the picture gives a little clearer idea of what's actually happening, though. Okay, upshot is the answer that comes out for this limit is pi over 2. Let's look at another example. So I'm going to consider the improper integral from 0 to 1 of x to the minus 1 half dx. Problem with integrals like this, when we're out in the wild, it may not be clear we have a vertical asymptote, or we may not be paying attention. So it's always a good idea to graph your function to see what's going on, if you can. Graph of x to the minus 1 half looks like this. So where's the vertical asymptote going to happen? Well, we're going from 0 to 1, and I notice Function's getting really close to 0, but never quite getting there. So I'm going to have my vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So the way I need to set up the limit, we're going from 0 to 1. So it's going to be on the lower limit where I have my vertical asymptote. So that's going to look like limit as a goes to 0, a to 1 of x to the minus 1 half dx. We know how to do the antiderivative of this. I add 1 and flip it over. So that's going to give me 2x to the 1 half going from a to 1 and take the difference. That gives me 2 minus a to the 1 half 
limit as a goes to zero just sends this piece here to zero and I get two. So two is gonna be the area under this region from zero to one as my graph goes all the way up to that vertical asymptote. Just as another caution of dealing with the vertical asymptotes, let's check out this example. So we're gonna look at improper integral from minus one to one of dx over x squared. Now you notice if you put in either of your limits of integration into the function, no problem at all. But let's take a look at what happens if we just jump in and integrate. So I take the antiderivative of x to the minus two, that says add one flip over, gives me minus x to the minus one. I put in my one and my minus one, take their difference, that's gonna give me minus two. Okay, well, one over x squared is always above the x-axis, so this is odd, okay? Odd as in, we wouldn't expect that. So let's draw the graph and see if we can get an idea of what's happening here. Well, when I draw the graph, you notice there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So the problem here is we integrated straight through that vertical asymptote, and that's why we're getting a weird result. So the correct way to evaluate this improper integral is to break it up at the vertical asymptote and then do each piece precisely with the limits. So a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, so I'm gonna split this into two pieces. Let's take a look. Limit as b goes to zero from the left. Okay, we're gonna go from minus one to b. So that would be like taking I'll put an A in for now too, because we'll use that in a second. So what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna take the area from minus one to B, and then I'm just gonna push B out to the vertical asymptote at X equals zero. So that looks like limit as B goes to zero from the left, minus one to B, one over X squared DX. We evaluate this, so it's antiderivative is minus X to the minus one, minus one to B. I stick in, we get minus one over b minus one. Then we're gonna take the limit as b goes to zero from the left. So I take a look at the graph. I'm looking at one over x, and I wanna see what happens as I go from zero from the left. So as I go into x along here to zero, we notice the values of one of x are dropping down to minus infinity. The minus one won't have any effect on a minus infinity, so this whole answer turns out to be minus, because I didn't use the minus yet, minus of minus infinity gives me a plus infinity. So that's gonna be the area on just this half is plus infinity. Let's take a look at the other piece. What are we doing here? I'm gonna take the area above A to one, and then I'm gonna push A down to zero and see what comes out. So that's written as limit A going to zero from the right, a to one, definite integral, one over x squared dx. I take my antiderivative, same as above, and then when I evaluate at each point, take their difference, I'm gonna have a minus one plus a one over a. Again, I take a look at the graph of one over x. We're gonna go to zero from the right, so we're coming in from this direction. We notice for the graph, the y values are gonna go up to plus infinity. This minus one will have no effect, so I'm just gonna wind up with a plus infinity for the area on this side. So that's when A goes all the way down to zero, that's plus infinity also. So that's gonna give me improper integral from minus one to one, plus infinity, plus infinity, gives me a plus infinity, and my answer diverges. So the correct answer here is not minus two, it's diverges.